Welcome to the CEO's Open Discussions Corner at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. My name is Michelle Holliday. Our guest today is Mr. Andrew Pollard. Andrew founded the Mining Recruitment Group, LTD, commonly known as MRG back in 2006. Andrew has amassed a who's who network in the mining and finance world by leveraging his own personal relationships to help to shape what have become some of the most prominent and successful resource companies in the world. In this sector where management is crucial, he has served as a trusted advisor to exploration companies and producers ranging in size from seed round all the way through to $100 billion in market capitalization. Currently, Andrew is the CEO of BlackRock Gold Corp, which is a minerals exploration company that develops gold deposits. So this is going to be an amazing interview because we are all very much into gold. Andrew, welcome to the show. How are you today? Thanks very much, Michelle. That's quite the intro. I couldn't have written it any better myself. (laughs) And your company is stellar. We are so excited to get into this. Let's start off, though, with the big picture, Andrew, in terms of numbers and the Mm -hmm. price of gold. It topped out in 2011 at over $1,900 per ounce, and it bottomed in December 2015 at just over $1,050 per ounce. Mm -hmm. The price has been trending upward ever since and it currently hoovers around the 1450s. Now, at today's prices, what does this mean for the gold mining industry overall? Well, you know, as you said, um, the gold price over the past few years has gone up and down. It's amazing. Um, in the grand scheme of things, what general audiences need to remember is that gold uh, is just a drop in the bucket. You can take every single large mining company on the planet and combine them and they still wouldn't even touch the market cap of an Apple or a Google. Um, so when uh, when gold goes up and when gold goes down, it tends to really move. As you said, in uh, 2011, uh, gold was $1,900 an ounce and in the course of one year, it lost nearly uh, half of its value. Um, the same thing that happened then is happening now in the sense that um, we've seen gold go up uh, just in the course of this year. Uh, you know, uh, from 11, well, 12.50 all the way up to about 15.50 a few months ago. Now, what's interesting about that is that for investors, no one's even paying attention yet. Generalist money still hasn't even really flown back into the mining sector. So it's those swings that are possible. Just as you can lose 50% of your money in a year uh, holding gold, which is generally a safe haven asset, um, you know, when the tide turns and when the risk uh, appetite goes down on the overall stock indexes, gold will go back up. Um, now, whether it can move 50% in a year upwards, well, uh, that's yet to be seen. I'm not one of the people that's going to sit and prognosticate that gold's going to be, you know, $5,000 next year. But is it conceivable that um, if sentiment changes in the overall markets, if something happens with the trade deal with China, for example, uh, in the U.S., if uh, Iran keeps seizing uh, British oil tankers in the Strait of Hormuz, if um, North Korea, uh, you know, uh, increase uh, escalates with their rhetoric that, you know, can gold move up to 1800 or 1900 Seriously, and if that does, uh, you know, what will that mean to junior mining stocks? That would be absolutely game-changing. Uh, you know, right now, no one is, uh, is still talking about mining stocks, even though that the uh, uh, the price of gold has gone up um, uh, quite a bit just in the past years. It's still sentiment could not be more bearish in the industry, but when it changes, it can change. Now, Andrew, many precious metals proponents believe that it's prudent for all Americans, in fact, everybody in the world, to actually physically hold some gold or silver in their possession. Do you agree with this strategy? And if so, why or why not? Well, uh, gold and precious metals have uh, uh, always been a good safe haven asset. Now, you, you know, what percentage of your portfolio? Uh, ultimately, it's about asset allocation. Would you, would you want to hold 100% of your assets in gold? No. Uh, would you want to hold some of it uh, to uh, backstop against inflation? Of course you will. So it's different for everybody. Um, but, you know, what's interesting about the what's happened in gold um, just in the most recent six months is that Uh, Over the past few years, it really hasn't acted as a safe haven investment. Um, Gold hasn't really moved in uh, the way it should in the light of some um, uh, factors that we're seeing in in terms of uh, uh, geopolitical stuff, in terms of interest rates. It hasn't really acted the way safe havens typically do. It's only actually in the past six months or so that you're starting to see gold 
uh, respond favorably to negative uh, geopolitical concerns. Um, you know, you saw the big price of uh, the, the big shot up uh, uh, of gold happened in May of this year. Um, you know, when the China trade deal started getting uh, discussed, uh, and when um, there was uh, discussions about uh, Iran and their nuclear. Um, uh, I guess aspirations and what they were doing to um, escalate tensions with the U.S. That's when it started acting like a safe haven again. And since then, in the summer, um, gold stocks were on fire. But it was a short-lived um, because you know right now the U.S. dollar is king. Um, the stock market is reaching all all-time highs, and uh, who wants to put their money in the safe uh, in safe investments like gold and silver if uh, they're you know making money on these things? But you know. Uh, Gold uh, mining stocks aren't the sexiest stocks, um, but you know what? What was sexy the past few years was WeWork. Well, that turned out to be a colossal failure. Uh, what you know? These these things that sound too good to be true often are, and that's why people should always have uh, some gold and silver in their portfolio. Yes, absolutely. Now you are the CEO of BlackRock Gold Corp. Talk to us about your company. What is your business model and why is it advantageous in today's gold market? Right. That, that's a great question. In, in terms of, uh, you, you know, to tell you about my company, I'll tell you a little bit about my background as you touched upon in my intro. Uh, for the last 15 years, I actually uh, have been working in the mining industry uh, as a management consultant. I ran an executive search firm. So, uh, my job was uh, working behind the scenes and in the boardrooms of some of the uh, uh, top companies in the mining sector, helping them um, clean up messes. Most of that time uh, came due to management. Um, I worked on some very early stage companies and I've worked with some very advanced, uh, well-known names in the sector. And uh, really my business for 15 years has been predicated on one thing and that's that management matters. Um, you can have the best project in the world, and it could be in incredibly overlooked, but if you have the wrong teams behind it, you're not really going to get the results that you want, certainly not from a business and certainly not as an investment. Um, BlackRock is a brand new story. Um, we are a Nevada-focused gold explorer. Uh, we're targeting ultra-high grades on what's uh, uh, one of the highest-grade gold belts on the planet. Um, we've got a project. Uh, this is the first time it's ever been um, uh, in a junior's hands that's following up on past uh, high-grade gold intercepts uh, made from major mining companies. Um, this is a project that uh, was last uh, worked on about 15 or 20 years ago uh, by, the, by some of the largest gold companies on the planet. But as we touched upon, um, gold and uh, mining stocks are very cyclical in nature. Um, this, the last time this project really saw the light of day was um, about 15 years ago, and it was a victim of the bear market then. Uh, it was in the hands of some of the biggest companies on the planet, uh, mining companies on the planet, uh, one by the name of Placer Dome and the other by the name of Tech Resources. Um, it ended up uh, not getting the attention it deserved, and um, we were able to put it into a shell, which was BlackRock, and we're now working on it. Now, no one's heard this story before because uh, it's a brand new story. In fact, I'm over in London right now marketing it, um, and I've given the presentation last week. That was the first time in six months since we stepped in where we've given the actual presentation on it to an audience. That said, um, over the past six months, we've actually been one of the best performing stocks on the TSX Venture Exchange in terms of uh, uh, share price appreciation. Um, when I stepped into BlackRock, we were three cents. Uh, as of a few weeks ago, we hit 35 cents, and that's on the back of over 60 million shares traded. Um, so, you know, effectively, we're a high growth story. Uh, we've got a project that's been vetted by some of the biggest mining companies on the planet. And we're in Nevada, which is one of the best um, jurisdictions you can, can be on. So we're uh, looking to make a big high grade gold discovery and we're drilling right now. So that's sort of the value proposition. Now, Andrew, it's incredible to note that you just took over the position as CEO of this company back in May of 2019. And at that time, it was trading at three cents. Mm -hmm. Since then, it has gone up to 35 cents. It's an incredible feat. Talk to us about what made this happen. How did you do this? Um, do you attribute it to your management or some other tricks of the trade that you pulled off? You, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take 
you know, this has been a huge win for early investors. Um, uh, you know, we were three cents and that was uh, the uh, 52 week low. That coincided with the day I stepped into office. Um, the stock had been trading very miserably for the preceding six months. In fact, it looked like a typical sort of venture or OTC stock that was just, you know, going down the gutter and someone was going to need to put it out of his misery. Um, I held a lot of shares in the in the company uh, leading into this, and I've always loved this project. Um, but I thought that uh, management could uh, could use a bit of a, a, a touch up. Well, that's what I do for a living. For 15 years, I've built management teams in the mining sector. I had a lot of skin in the game here, and frankly, I thought this project that we have uh, in Nevada was too good. It deserved better. So. I, I decided rather than to see it go down the drain, I was going to roll up my sleeves and, and do it myself. And really, um, yeah, the day I stepped in, we went down from, from five cents. We traded down to three cents. People thought that that was the beginning of the end. They said this first time CEO was going to come in here. Holy cow, I got to get out. Well, within uh, within a week, we were up to about uh, five cents. Within two weeks, we were at 10 cents. And uh, about four months later, we were at 35.5 cents. We traded uh, 60 million shares since then. What's the difference? Well, the project we had uh, leading into it in May before I stepped in is the same project that we have now. The problem is no one was telling that story before. When I say this is a new story, this is a new story. No one's heard of it. Uh, old management just didn't do a good job of, um, of uh, putting one foot in front of the other and actually getting out there and telling them uh, the market just what they had. Um, because unless you were a major mining company that was, uh, that's been active in Nevada for 20 years, You'll have never known about this project before. If you do work within one, you'd certainly want it. And, and there's lots of ones that have tried to get it over the last years. This is a huge opportunity. And I knew that the company was going to do much more. So, yeah, when I stepped in, I had a plan. What was that plan? Well, bakers bake, surgeons cut. I was a recruiter. I was going to build a management team that I thought was worthy of the project. So that's what I did. I reconstituted the board. I brought in a world-class geologist. Actually, he's someone that um, used to run exploration for Placer Dome, which uh, back in the early 2000s was the, one of the largest gold companies on the planet. And this guy is actually credited with, credited with a discovery on the planet. So he's getting back behind a project um, that he had uh, about 17 years ago. And he think, he knows exactly uh, uh, where to hit, well, how to hit the ground running. And that's what we've done. So uh, I brought in him as an executive chairman. His name is Bill Howell. I brought in some other directors. And now uh, all I've been doing is just shining a bit of a spotlight on this project and what we think we might have here. Talk to us about what you just said. Right. Yeah. So we've got a project. It's um, 40 square kilometers or about 12,000 acres uh, in the north central Nevada. Um, this area, uh, you know, many uh, of your listeners will know that Nevada uh, is one of the most prolific mining districts on the planet. Um, there's more gold. Well, if Nevada were a country, it would be the fifth largest gold producing country on the planet. Um, so we're surrounded. We're at the top of uh, what would be known as the Carlin trend. Um, that's the second most productive gold belt on the planet. There's literally hundreds of millions of ounces of gold there. Um, now, lots of these mines have been around for many decades and they're absolutely massive. They're these big, uh, uh, pits in the ground that are absolutely giant beyond any sort of uh, proportions that it's, it, it, it's hard to comprehend without actually seeing them. Now we're just to the north of that. Um, we're 20 miles away from a mine called Gold Strike, which is owned by Newmont. That's the largest gold mine in North America. Um, but we're on a different gold belt. Um, so we're, we're right close to it. Um, but we're on a, a gold belt called the Northern Nevada Rift. The Northern Nevada Rift is known as being one of the highest grade gold belts on the planet meaning they're producing at um, uh, just ultra high grade gold. So generally the gold there is found in high grade veins. So on one side of our project is uh, some of the biggest monster mines on the planet and right surrounding us, uh, uh, we've got 40 square kilometers on one of the highest grade gold belts on the planet. So we're truly, you know, this isn't a proximity play, but if it were, this is the Beverly Hills of, of, of real estate when it comes to mining. So we're in a good location. Now, why has no one heard about this? Well. This project uh, was ultimately tied up back in 1999. Um, it's surrounded by two really well-known mines in Nevada. One's called Hollister, and the other's called the Midas Mine. Um, these mines, uh, uh, well, one of them's a 4 million ounce plus discovery, uh, and Hollister's uh, 
uh, well over a million ounces, but ultra, ultra high grade gold. They've also been operated uh, on and off for the last 20 years. These are really, really well established mines. Um, this project we had uh, has been tied up since 1999. It had two small rounds of drilling done on it um, between 99 and 2003. One at the hands of Tech Resources, which is still around and one of the largest uh, diversified miners on the planet, multi-billion dollar company. Uh, the other was Placer Dome that entered into a joint venture with them. Um, on two small rounds of drilling, it yielded two different high-grade discoveries. Um, why isn't, uh, they, neither of which have been followed up until now. So um, why did it fall out of favor? Well, this was in 2003. Gold was tanking. Um, major mining companies weren't investing in, in grassroots exploration, which this was. Um, and rather than give the project back to the, the actual vendor, because um, uh, the guy who owns it, uh, because Tech and, and Placer Dome did a lease on it, um, they just kept it on their books. Um, and really, the project hasn't seen uh, nearly any work in the last 15 years. Uh, the owner of the project got it back uh, and, and was able to um, vend it into BlackRock a, about a year and a half ago. And since then, um, as I said, the last six months is only when uh, people have really taken notice of it. But this is a major mining company project uh, in the best jurisdiction on the planet uh, that's wrapped in a one-asset junior company shell. And I've got a hell of a geologist running the show right now. And we're doing the first exploration on the project um, uh, that I've seen in about 15 years. So we're targeting serious grades. Tech Resources drilled 158 grams per ton over a meter and a half on one of their first drill holes. Uh, we've got other um, uh, intercepts that are up to 12.5 grams per ton. Um, so we had very compelling stuff and we're just trying to pick up about 15 years later where uh, Tech and Placer left off. This is such an exciting opportunity for potential investors and for the investors that right now hold BlackRock. Right, well listen, we've done uh, you know about 12X return to shareholders just by telling people what we have and shining a spotlight on the project. Um, we haven't, we're drilling right now, so uh, it's a very exciting uh, time for people to be looking at it, but there aren't many stories on the planet that can say that they've delivered, uh, you know, they've delivered over 10 times uh, share, uh, share appreciation to investors just based off of telling the story and a new geologic interpretation. What's happened in the last 15 years? Well, um, I, I, this project's literally a time capsule because it hasn't been touched in so long that uh, we're, we're inheriting all of the work that Tech and Placer Dome did, but we're also inheriting about 15 years worth of data uh, that's been amassed on the gold belt. So all the gold mines around us, we have all, we're privy to all that data. And the geologic understanding of what's going on in that area has changed. It's gone from black and white to full color. Um, the story next door to us, uh, Hollister, that discovery, um, the understanding of how the vein systems on that project work, it took them over 100 drill holes to get an understanding of the orientation as to which way the vein systems were going on this. We now know that the, the veins there go in an east-west orientation. Um, when our project was drilled 15 years ago, everyone thought the veins went like this. So when Tech made a discovery over here of 158 grams per ton, and Placer Dome made a discovery two kilometers away to the west, Everyone always thought these were two separate discoveries. We know now um, that the mine right next door to us, they also thought uh, the veins ran like this too. It took 150 drill holes for them to understand that the veins actually go like this. We don't think that the discoveries made by Tech and Placer were two independent discoveries like this. We think that they're tied together and the vein system actually goes this way. And that's a new understanding, a new interpretation that has been unlocked, not by anything that we've done, but by uh, time moving on uh, and all the other major mining companies operating around us and giving us this data. We're, we don't have to drill 100 holes. We now know this, and that's what we're pushing forward with right now with this drill program. So it's an incredible opportunity. Wow. Um, tell everybody your tickers and where you trade. Yeah, so we're wildly liquid. We're, uh, we're in Nevada, um, so naturally we want to make this as accessible to uh, American investors as we can. So we're on the OTC under the tri symbol B-K-R-R-F, um, and we're also uh, very widely traded on the TSXV under BRC. Um, we also have a listing on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, I'm told, as well, and that's AHZ, but uh, we don't see much action over there. But um, that said, I'm over in Europe right now telling the story to investors here. So 
Uh, we might see some activities pop up on that exchange too, but uh, we're, we're mostly traded between the OTC and the uh, QX and the TSXV. This is incredible. Now, Andrew, for retail investors who are looking at this stock, what would you describe as the catalysts that boost the value of the company? And do you have an exit strategy? Yeah, well, listen, we're targeting high-grade gold in Nevada, and the way you target that is by drilling. Uh, we've done everything we can. We've done more work on this project in the last five months than it's seen in aggregate uh, over the past 15 years. Um, but ultimately, the drills have to do the talking. And we started drilling um, uh, to search for gold and to prove our concept. Um, drills started turning at the beginning of October, and they're still turning now. So in terms of catalyst, literally everything we've done so far is just to get us to the point that allows us to drill. Uh, the drilling that we're doing now, um, if we're correct, I mean, that's the ultimate catalyst. Um, and I expect we'll have uh, uh, news flow lined up over the next two to three months or so as we're drilling multiple holes. We're doing a five-hole program right now. Um, so, yeah, we, we expect to have assays um, coming back from the lab uh, within a matter of a week or so, uh, all the way through to uh, maybe the end of uh, January as we're still drilling. So, now is a good time to put this on your radar. It's a good time to um, consider taking a bet. You know, all you have to do is look at some of the best stocks over the past years that have run. They've been vein-hosted discoveries in good jurisdictions. While we're targeting high-grade vein-hosted deposits, uh, we're in the best jurisdiction on the planet. We've got this is a former major mining um, project wrapped in a junior shell, and we're drilling. Like, we're, we're, we're walking the talk. So, all will be revealed shortly, but this is the perfect time to get into something like this. And as I said, I came into this as a shareholder first. Um, I'm looking at everything we're doing through the lens of a shareholder. Uh, return on investment. How do we how do we add shareholder value, and how do we keep this exciting? So, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, all the market cares about are grades, and I think um, uh, those results will be coming up shortly. And we're targeting ultra high grade stuff, so uh, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We know where tech encountered uh, the high-grade gold before. We know where Placer Dome encountered it. That's a good starting place. Yes. Now, I know your expertise, your background is in choosing management. And mm -hmm. you touched on your management just briefly, but I'd like you to discuss your team for us. Yeah, so uh, the core of the team is uh, uh, myself and our executive chairman. His name is Bill Howell. Um, Bill is calling all the shots at the project level for us. So not only is he... Uh, effectively my boss, but he's also the real brains behind the operation. He's, his background is in geology. Um, he's one of the few people, and, and keep in mind, I've built management teams for 15 years. Uh, he's one of the few geologists I know that can uh, claim to have added over 100 million ounces of gold uh, uh, through his career. Um, he is uh, a proven entity in mining. Uh, he had oversight over all of the Americas for Placer Dome when they were uh, one of the largest gold companies on the planet, and back when they were drilling this project. Um, the year after, maybe a year and a half after Placer Dome um, couldn't continue with our project back in 2003, they were actually acquired for $10 billion U.S. Uh, by Barrick, which is now one of the largest uh, mining companies on the planet. Um, the thing to keep in mind is that what moved the needle for, for tech and Placer Dome uh, and Barrick and all these other companies is very different than what would move the, the needle for uh, BlackRock Gold, a one asset company um, that is looking to follow in their footsteps. So um, uh, that's what got Bill back here. Bill, after leaving, uh, after the takeout uh, by Barrick of Placer Dome for $10 billion, he went on to form another company called Rypatch Gold, which some of your listeners may know of. Rypatch, uh, as founder and CEO of that, uh, Bill took that to $120 million takeout last year. Uh, he was acquired, and that was another Nevada gold explorer that he took through to production. So the project could not be in better hands, and, um, you know, he realizes that he had it wrong. He knows Bill is, lives in Reno. He knows exactly um, what's going on in that gold belt now, and um, really he's excited to get back behind it at the helm. So my job is really just to stay out of his way, uh, tell the story, and let him uh, uh, handle things at the project level. And so far we're off to a good start. Um, the rest of the changes have just been at the board level. We've got um, the former vice president of investor relations from Newmont on our board. Um, his name is John Seberg. We've got uh, Bill's uh, former CFO and head of corporate development from Rypatch, 
uh, that uh, that was just taken out for $120 million by the name of Tony Wood. He's on our board. Uh, we've got a good breadth of experience from geology, corporate finance, investor relations, and whatever the heck you want to say that I do. But um, uh, yeah, the, so we're a small, lean and mean team. Um, you know, we've grown so fast that, uh, you know, five months ago, we were one, one and a half million market cap company. Now, depending on the day, we're about 15 to 20 million uh, market cap company. And if we hit anything uh, uh, in the way of th th that we've modeled in terms of what our drill program uh, has laid out, then we'll be a much larger company. But ultimately, this is a very high growth company, and it's hard to keep the infrastructure up with the, the growth rate right now. But we're still running a lean and mean, as I said. I've got skin in the game and I'm just trying to deliver uh, value to shareholders and build something here. Yeah, it is. It's, it's moving so fast um, mm. from three cents um, in May. What do you think the true future potential of this company is? Well, uh, you know, as I said before, the market really in the past few years has moved away from these big open pit, low grade deposits before in mining, uh, the flavor of the day was like bigger is better. So they wanted these big open pit deposits. Um, but the problem with those is they're generally ultra low grade and um, you're going to very far flung places of the earth to find them. Um, we've got 40 square kilometers on the Northern Nevada rift where there's power lines on our project. My cell phone works up there. We're surrounded by some of the biggest mining companies on the planet. Um, and there's big yellow trucks driving by our project every day hauling ore uh, to establish uh, mills and processing facilities. So we couldn't get in a better jurisdiction. You don't have to go off to far off places. We're 45 minutes off of I-80 on uh, uh, in Nevada. Um, so in terms of that, I mean, ounces in the ground in Nevada are worth more than anywhere else on the planet. We're talking about high-grade stuff that we're targeting. We know there's gold up there, uh, up to 158 grams per tonne over a meter and a half. So that's a good start. What that means for investors is, well, look at some of the best stories of the past few years. Um, Great Bear Resources uh, ran up. Um, there, They went from 50 cents to $9 in the last year on the back of tying together some very good drill holes, but they were targeting high grade in a good jurisdiction. The best performing stock last year was a company called West Haven Ventures. Uh, in October of last year, they were 15 million market cap. Uh, which is where we are now. They were doing a 2,000 or so meter drill program, which is exactly what we're doing right now. And they proved up um, uh, in the course of two really good drill holes. They went from 15 million market cap in October to 140 million market cap at Christmas. So um, that's the upside, uh, frankly. Um, uh, in, and I know that story very well because, in fact, BlackRock works out of the West Haven offices in Vancouver, and the West Haven founder is actually my brother. So I'm very, you know, they're targeting high-grade epithermal gold in BC. We're targeting high-grade epithermal gold in Nevada. Um, and, you know, that's, that's sort of what the upside that, that I'd love to sort of mirror. Naturally, uh, my mother would like bragging rights because if we're able to do that, then the best performing stock last year would be for my brother. And this one, we're on track to do that, if, certainly if we connect the dots in a drill program. So, yeah. There's something to be said. Wow, there's something to be said for having family members that do it also, because you've got that huge resource of amazing people, knowledge, yeah. background, wealth. It's a brain bank. Um, and, you know, we've had some of the, uh, you know, some all the groups that matter in the world have been through our office. Um, it helps that our project, you know, it's a former major mining project. Um, in the 1980s, Newmont had it, but they were very drilling very, very shallow holes. They didn't know that if you went a little deeper, you could find these high-grade veins. So they were searching for lower-grade bulk tonnage, um, near-surface uh, uh, near surface gold deposits. And they, in 12 holes, they actually hit high-grade gold at surface. Uh, they've had intercepts in the 1980s at 3 grams per ton. Um, that's pretty good. That's a, we don't even talk about the, the, the Newmont connection to the story. But um, that's a whole other area of the project that um, uh, is just sitting there waiting for waiting to be looked at. But as I said, the project's been sitting in purgatory uh, for 15 years. It's, it's finally time that it's getting some real action behind it. And um, I'm just happy to be the one that gets to do it. So, Yes. Andrew, this has been an amazing interview. Thank you so much for bringing the overview to all of our gold lovers. And we have a lot of them out there. Where can everyone go to learn more about BlackRock Gold Corp? Thank you. Yeah, uh, the best place is the website, blackrockgoldcorp.com. So 
blackrockgoldcorp.com. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I try and be as accessible as I possibly can be too. So you can feel free to email me if you have any questions. It's just andrew at blackrockgoldcorp.com. Um, as I said, you know, the best way to follow these things, um, generally, it's, it's sort of like sports betting. You, you follow the teams that you, that you have in your fantasy league. So, you know, I say draft us. Um, put, you know, whether it's $5 or whatever, it's just, you know, something that you focus on and you shows up in your phone every day as you're checking the tickers. That's the best way is just to immerse yourself in it and see if we can walk the talk. But as I said, I'm a shareholder here first and foremost. And that's, um, uh, you know, and the reason I put my practice uh, on hold and I took a big step back and paid to do this was because I believe that this project truly deserves it. So, um, yeah, now we'll, you know, ultimately the results will do the talking, but we're, we're, we're putting one foot in front of the other and it's, uh, been a 15 year wait, but uh, we're almost there now. So that's stellar advice to buy a little bit and then just watch it through your phone. Yeah, it's happens. just immersion. It's how you follow sports teams, and that's you know, be, become your own general manager of a stock. You know, it's, it's the way I learned about these things 20 years ago was just buy a little bit, and then that's how you follow, uh, follow these groups, and then you figure out the ones that actually can deliver and the ones that don't. Those stories that you really like you go a little bit bigger, but ultimately. Um, it's up to you, the investor. I mean, even in a practice portfolio, that's good too, but it's just about immersion. And ultimately, um, the good stuff rises to the top pretty quickly. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for coming on this show today. Thank you so much too. I appreciate it. Mr. Andrew Pollard, CEO of Black Rock Gold Corp. For the CEO's Open Discussions Corner, I'm Michelle Holliday at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com.